Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. As we gather together on this beautiful fall afternoon to worship our God, let us prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries by first calling to mind our sins. And let us ask God for his love, his mercy, and his forgiveness. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, 
has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on the journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received made two, made another two. But the man who received one went off and dig a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where they will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Do you remember the fear of Y2K, the Hale-Bopp Comet? Every few years, someone makes a dire prediction that the world is coming to an end on a specific date. Each prediction is vehement, expressed with certainty. But so far, all of them have been wrong. Last January, a teenager confronted me with a question, 
Christ is supposed to return this year. What do you think about that? To which I responded, well, I guess I think I better look busy. Seriously, I've never been concerned with any of the end of the world predictions. Jesus makes it very clear in Matthew's gospel. No one knows the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Father, the Creator, is the only one who knows when his creation will come to its conclusion. But that does not mean that we shouldn't be prepared for the end. In today's second reading, St. Paul tells the people of Thessalonica that the day of the Lord, the end of time, will come like a thief in the night when people least expect it. Now, some of these people took Paul too literally and just quit working or caring for their families, just bracing themselves for the inevitable end so much so that Paul had to write to them again and tell them to get back at it, and that those who refuse to work should not eat. Perhaps time will not end before we die, but when we die, our own personal time comes to an end. We spend this month of November praying for our loved ones who have died, and indeed for all the souls of the faithfully departed. Death is a reality that all of us must face. How then should we prepare for the Lord to come, whether it's at the end of all time or the end of our own personal time? Well, instructions are available throughout sacred scripture, but particularly in today's gospel, which, by the way, comes in the section of the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus is speaking about the end of time. Today's gospel is a parable about the talents. The master entrusts his possessions to three of his servants and then goes on a journey. And when he returns, he calls them in to see how they have invested them, rewarding the first who had returned more to him than had been given to them, and punishing the third who had buried his talent in the ground. A little something on this. To the ancients, a talent was a unit of weight. The weight was determined by the amount of water needed to fill a vessel called an amphora. The various ancient peoples had different sizes of amphoras. A talent for the ancient Greeks, 57 pounds. For the Romans, 71 pounds. For the Egyptians, 60 pounds. And by burying the talent, the ancient law said that the servant was no longer responsible for it. He had abdicated his duty, and that is why the master in the parable was so upset with this third servant. But I think that we can use our contemporary definition of talent to better explain how we need to prepare for the Lord to come into our lives. Our definition of the talent is the natural aptitude or skill that someone has. For some, that talent may be music. For others, technology. For others, still, they are gifted athletes. We all have certain natural gifts. We are all given these talents by God. And we are given these talents with the expectation that we will develop and use these talents to serve God and his people. Not very often, but sometimes you may hear an athlete begin an interview after a sporting event in which he or she has excelled by saying, 
first of all, I will give glory to God. And that athlete would be correct. God is the source of all of our talent. This athlete sees his or her developing this talent as returning that gift to God. To the athlete, the focus is on God and not on him or herself. And we all should do this regarding the many talents the Lord has entrusted to each of us. Perhaps someone has said to you, you are such a good mother or a good father. Or perhaps someone has said to us, I am nowhere near as good at this as you are. And our response, at least to ourselves, should be, whatever I do well, I credit God as the source of this talent. All glory belongs to him. All of our talents, all our gifts flow from God, and none of us has the right to take credit for them. This is emphasized at the end of the Eucharistic prayer at Mass, when the priest elevates the most precious body and blood and says, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever, to which we all respond, Amen. Yes, God is the source of all talent. All glory be his. A common objection to this line of thinking often goes something like this. God may have given me the talent, but I had to work very hard to develop that talent. No, data, no doubt a state champion swimmer has to get up much earlier than any of his classmates, spending hours in the pool before school begins, and then once again afterwards. No doubt a doctor acclaimed in her or his field, who so many claim that they are the finest ever, has had to work very hard to get through medical school and residency, and now spends as much time as possible developing his or her knowledge to serve his or her patients. Everyone can point out how hard he or she works to develop their talents but our talents come from God and must be developed to serve God. He is the focus, not us. His is the glory, not ours. And we share in his glory only to the extent that we have allowed him to be seen in our efforts. And you know, this is such an important message for all to hear, especially important of a message for us to convey to our children. The Lord tells us in the parable that the Master will come for an accounting of how we have used our particular talents that he has given to each of us. The first two servants in the parable returned more than they received, allowing the master's possessions to grow. And God is calling us to develop what he has given us to allow his kingdom to grow. Even in the short amount of time that I have been here at the Cathedral of St. Joseph Parish, I often look out at you folks, and I am in awe of your God-given talents. And I am even more in awe of how you so freely and generously put them to the service of each other, to the community of this church. And for that, I am most grateful. Thank you, one and all. 
So will the world end soon? Maybe yes, maybe no. But we can't be concerned with worrying about the exact day or the hour. Frankly, it is not for us to know. It is not our concern. But what we do have to be concerned with is doing our part to prepare for the Lord's coming either at the end of all time or at the end of our own personal time. And if we develop the talents God has entrusted to us, the day will come when he will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Together, let us now stand and proudly profess our faith in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now together we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the church, called to show Christ's mercy to others, especially to the vulnerable and the poor who suffer most, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may all God's people use their many talents to proclaim the sanctity of life in their communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Archdiocese of Hartford, as brothers and sisters in Christ, may we be united to one another in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have dedicated their lives to the service of the poor and homeless, may God bless them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, may we be moved by the love of God and by love of neighbor to show true generosity to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions that people wish to have remembered at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Clemens Schwanis, our deceased loved ones. May all those who died in the hope of the kingdom of heaven be purified by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> and for the intention for this Mass, which is being offered for Reverend Maurice Berry on the occasion of his retirement and for him in his many years of ministry and many years of retirement to come, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, be attentive to our needs, our prayers this day. As always, answer them according to your holy will. And all this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God 
whose giving knows no ending from your rich and endless store. Nature's wonder, Jesus' wisdom, costly cross, grave shattered door. Gifted by you, we turn to you, offering up ourselves in praise. Thankful song shall rise forever, gracious tuner of our and time are ours for pressing toward the goals of Christ your Son. All at peace in health and freedom races joined the church made one. Now direct our daily labor, lest we strive for self alone. Born with talents, make us servants fit to answer at Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Song to Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit Domine, Domine, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Holy Martyrs, and with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. command informed by divine teaching we now dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace without touching.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us this evening. Have a great week.